Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Vets of Gaming, and a new video on the channel uh, with my third build of the league. Uh, I'm going back to one of my favourite skills and classes, which is Tornado Shot Deadeye. I'm going to try and make it as cheap as possible in terms of a Tornado Shot budget. I don't have, you know, mirrors to put into the build. I don't have an omniscience. I've probably got about six divines and gear that I've already got on my spectral shield throw character that I can move across. So I've probably got two to three divines worth of gear that I can put directly onto the character. I've already crafted some items for it, which we'll come on to later. I want this build to basically be a quick T16 map clear. The reason I like Tornado Shot is it's a brain dead skill. You don't have to aim it, you just click. It doesn't matter where the Tornado Shot hits, it's then going to fire out loads of um, extra projectiles and wipe out most of the screen. That's why I like it. I don't like builds where you have to aim and be really specific because I'm not that great. Um, I'm quite colorblind, so even with a pink cursor, I find it hard to target enemies. So things like Tornado Shot were awesome for me because I can just spam the button knowing that it's going to kill enemies and without too much bother. And so as I said, no omniscience. I'm going to try and run Grace, Determination and Precision, so not a damage aura. So it's going to take a bit um, of damage in terms of the tree and gear. I want to get Almond Immune. I want to get as close to Spell Suppression Capped as possible. And I want to get Stun Immune as well. Um, so the things that I get into most builds and you do have to sacrifice certain things But it just makes mapping super comfortable um, So I'll go over the character a bit later on in the video where it is at the moment and how I plan to take it forward So at first you want to go over how I leveled the character because I found when I leveled the spectral shield throw character I was really slow. I didn't bother getting twink gear. Really. I had a few pieces I didn't really look at when I transitioned to certain gems what gear I want to make sure I'm flying through the campaign and I was probably about five and a half hours, which for a twink character or a second character is pretty bad. So I wanted to make sure that I get through the campaign super quickly on this character. So I made sure I had um, the twink gear that I needed. I knew when I needed to equip each item. Um, I had low level crafting materials like essences so I could craft and replacement items fairly easily. And it went really, really well. So I think I'm, the character's level 76 at the minute. I'm doing sort of early tier red mats and I'm still not hit um, six hours, which I'm pretty sure on a spectral shield throw character, I was still sort of early 60s and, and in the campaign. So I'm not a speed runner. So it wasn't, I'm, I'm not blindingly quick. I just noticed that my spectral shield throw character was too slow for leveling. So let's go through the leveling. And really you just need some nice cheap twink items, a clear plan of progression, and then you should, there's no reason you can't go through the campaign in under four hours. With all the skill points done. I think I was 3 hours 40 minutes. And that's with taking a bit of time to craft gear. Which I could have had prepared um, beforehand. I'm not the most dexterous player in the world. So I don't do any you know, sorting out gear while I'm moving. I don't vendor walk. I don't do double movement skills. Literally all of the speed just comes from gear. Nodes on the tree and dead eye ascendancy. Most of the time I'm just running through the map. I'm not doing anything special. Um, and because we're pretty overpowered with some of the gear that we've got. Your lightning arrow and your mirage archer. Most of the time just clear stuff. Um, well, you don't do anything. So you hit an enemy, your Mirage Archer spawns, you then can just run through the map and your Archer will take everything out. Um, so that's what we're going to go through first for people that are interested is the leveling. If you're not bothered about leveling, you kind of know how to do that um, nice and quick. Then skip to the gear tree and the mapping section. So in terms of leveling, I'll go through the uniques that I use and when you want to equip each one. So at the beginning, I just wanted some early damage. So it was two black heart iron rings because they had some really good physical damage. Gold rim for resistances. And I should have done wonder lust and movement speed, but I had problems buying them because they're so cheap. So I just like crafted with alterations a 10% pair of movement speed boots. But I'd recommend wonder lust because they're 20%. I think you can't get frozen. So they're quite handy boots to have. Uh, just grabbed uh, a bow from the vendor because with all the additional um, damage you've got from your rings, you can also buy... Uh, a rustic sash to give some more um, percentage damage just the bog standard bow is fine because we're going to replace it uh, at level five so level five is when we're going to stick on quill rain and career reward they're both awesome items early on you're going to have to make sure at this stage that you go and buy a medium mana flask because quill rain it eats your mana but you do get mana on hit so as long as you're not wasting tons and tons of shots you shouldn't have any mana issues um, there's also a node early on in the tree that you can take that gives you uh, like mana recovery when you've used uh, a mana flask, which um, if you follow the tree, you're going to take around level eight or nine. Uh, and you just carry on from there. At level 15, you can equip Harry's Bite Quiver. It solves most of the attribute issues you might come across and give some nice flat damage. At level 17, you're going to stick on an Ashren chest. I didn't even know this chest 
existed because there was lots of rebalance you need to go through and this offers up to 150 percent um physical damage for ranged skills which is awesome it's also going to really come in handy with one of the uniques we're going to equip uh, later on uh, level 20 you don't have to i had a berics ring in my stash they had a bit of flat damage um, a bit of resistances so i just equipped one beric ring and then one rare that gave me some resist because we're going to be using a lot of uniques you might struggle a little bit um, for resist so then i dropped um, the two black heart rings at level 25 prison weave belt becomes equipable and that is awesome it gives an absolute ton uh, of flat damage it carries your damage for most uh, of the playthrough it is insane the flat damage you get it's kind of in terms of at this stage of the game, it's probably three support gems worth of flat damage. Uh, level 28 is when things really start kicking in and we replace Quill Rain with Doom Fletch. And what this does is gives fairly decent fizz damage, like up to 100, 120 flat fizz. But it also converts at 100% of that physical to every element. So you're going to be getting 100 odd physical, 100 fire, 100 lightning, 100 cold. What well, that also means is because you're going to be running lightning arrow, your trinity is always going to proc. So that again is a really, really good boost um, to damage. And then later on around that five is when you're going to start looking to replace your gold rim, replace your wonderlust and replace your rings with good rares with maybe a little bit of flat damage and some resistances. Um, just to make sure you're nice and you're capped before you go into act six uh, for the penalty. Um, so we'll talk about skills to use when you're leveling. So your first um, sort of foray into it is going to be Galvanic Arrow, Mirage Archer, Onslaught, and then at level 8 you add added cold into that. So a four link, so maybe slot that into your gold rim. And then a Shrapnel Ballista, Pierce, and added cold. Movement skill is going to be Dash because it's all you can get early on. And then once you can equip Flame Dash, I would use that just because you get a few more charges. Uh, and that's kind of it for your early leveling in Act 1. Once you hit Act Oh, sorry, once you hit level 12, you can put on Lightning Arrow for Galvanic Arrow, and you're going to swap your gems around a little bit. So it's going to be Lightning Arrow, Lesser Multiple Projectiles, Onslaught, and then Mirage Archer. If you start to struggle for damage, you could swap um, Onslaught for Added Cold, but I'd recommend Onslaught just because it helps you get through um, the campaign zones quicker. We are going to be able to drop it later on because we're going to get Onslaught on Kill from the Tree, but it just helps early on to zoom through uh, the campaign zones. Your Ballista setup is going to be Lightning Arrow, Ballista Support, Added Cold, and then when you get a Fall Link for that, it's Ellie Damage with Attacks, which is um, equipable at level 18. When you get into Act 2, you can equip some Auras. I just use Herald of Ice and Blood Rage because I wanted to make sure I didn't have mana issues. If you want to, you can maybe try slotting in um, a Herald of Thunder or Skitterbots or anything. If you can manage the mana, it's more damage. And that's kind of it uh, for Act 2. When you get into Act 3 is when you can start equipping proper auras at around level 25. I ran Haste because it's extra attack speed and extra movement speed. And the other ones like Anger and stuff, they don't give a huge amount of flat damage and your Prison Weave Belt more than makes up for it. Feel free to run a defense wall, but you really don't need to. You're going to be so quick. Lightning Arrow is going to obliterate everything before anything gets near you and bosses will melt. Um, so I would run Haste um, and a low level Precision. Then you can at that stage also add in Ellie Weakness if you need a bit of extra boss damage. And that's really it until you get to level 38 in terms of gems and that's when everything becomes available. By this stage you've got your Doom Fletch bow on. So your setup is going to be, this is just a 5 link, feel free to go 6 link if you want and add another damage gem in like um, Ellie damage. Uh, but mana on bow skills is quite intense. Um, so you do not need more damage than a 5 link but feel free if you want to. Um, so your gem links at 38 are Lightning Arrow, Inspiration just to manage mana. If you're not having mana issues, you can run Ellie Damage with Attacks. You're going to run a Mirage Archer on it because literally that's going to be 90% of your kills is going to be your Mirage Archer. Um, greater Multiple Projectiles and then Trinity. Trinity is always going to proc because of the Ellie Damage you get from the bow and the extra Lightning we get from Lightning Arrow. Lightning it's always going to be your biggest role. That also rolls really low, so then you obviously get your, your cold and your fire will overtake it all the time. So Trinity is not really anything you have to worry about managing on the build. And then your Ballista is going to be linked up with Lightning Arrow. Focus Ballista because it gives you increased totem placement speed and it, a ton of totem attack speed. And then Ellie damage with attacks. 
In terms of your curse, you can now drop um, Ellie Weakness. You really don't need it for trash. Mark on hit, Sniper's Mark, and then Inspiration or Life Tap to lower the cost a bit is all you need. And the bosses are really only place you're going to need some damage. Uh, and those links will literally see you through the whole campaign super quickly. You don't need to change your gear. You might notice, damn it, you're not absolutely shredding stuff when you get to maybe Act 9 and 10, but it's still super, super comfortable. Um, and with this setup, as you can see from all the footage I've had running in the background, you don't need to do anything to be quick, which will explain when I go through the tree. You've just got so many things that make you an absolute powerhouse in terms of damage and an absolute speed merchant um, for getting around the map. Uh, so we'll go through the tree now, and I will explain kind of how this tree coincides with the gear to help you be really quick and um, so what we'll do is go through the tree and just explain yeah how the tree goes along with the gear and what makes this character so super quick um to progress now on league start you'd normally beeline for this node straight away you'd literally just go the proj nodes and then straight down here um, but we don't really need the help as much because we've got some really overpowered uniques that we can use um, when we're leveling um, so this is what your tree looks like first. So you're going to go through Proj Nodes, Aspect to the Eagle, through Primal Spirit, because this is what makes your mana sustain not a problem. You just need to use a Mana Flask every 10 seconds and you get mana gain on hit. Uh, go down to Finesse and then back up to Heart Boat. You don't have to do this. If you just want to go full Glass Cannon, you don't have to take the life. Uh, but I think it helps. 2% uh, regen is also quite nice if you're going to use Blood Rage. Then you're going to come through quick step for the movement speed into intuition. Then you're going to go for precise technique. For people that haven't used this node, it's so good for leveling. It's 40% more attack damage if accuracy is higher than your life. And you can't deal critical strikes, which you don't care about. We're not going to scale crit at all until we get sort of level 70 plus. So all you have to do is make sure that your main hand accuracy rating is higher than your life. But with a few nodes we're going to go through, it will be, unless you're absolutely tanky for life, which you won't be uh, with the tree I'm going to go through, you don't really have to worry about it. I normally take this node here, which is increase and reduction to projectile speed applied to bows. But at the start, you could take something like this, uh, 100 accuracy per green socket on your bow. You're going to have at least three on your bow, I would think. Um, that means you kind of don't have to worry about um, the accuracy side of things. Then you're going to go and get this node here, Graceful Assault. Gives you Onslaught on kill, which means you can drop Onslaught uh, from your gem links. And then down here to get Point Blank, which is again 30% more damage if you're standing right on top um, of the enemy. And then you're going to path through life here, and then you go up and get Acuity. And this is where you get another node that basically means your accuracy is always going to be higher than your life, um, which is the Accuracy Bonus Grants plus 3 to Accuracy per Dexterity. And every time I checked my accuracy in my playthrough, I was like 1,000 to 1,500 accuracy over my life. Um, but it's just something to check every now and again, um, just to make sure. And the way all this combines together, um, because by the time you do your first lab, you're going to take uh, Gathering Winds, which is Tower Wind. So you're going to have Gathering Winds. You're going to have Haste, which you're going to use as your aura. You're going to have Onslaught. You've got all this movement speed here. You're going to have movement speed from Boost. It is just insanely quick. And like I say, you don't have to do anything fancy. You will just run quickly anyway, kill a mob every now and again, and your Mirage Archer is going to take everything else out. Um, I'll quickly run through the rest of the tree, but it's there for if you want to level. There's nothing really that happens much from here. Uh, this is the only other node to point out that, again, is really, really good because you're using Lightning Arrow. So Lightning Damage is going to be the majority of our damage. This makes your non-critical strikes lucky. Essentially... Lightning has a massive damage roll. It could be like from 50 to 1,000 or something. Lightning damage, lucky, means it rolls it twice. So let's say you rolled a 20 and you rolled a 50, then it's going to apply the 50. So it just means overall you're going to be getting much more damage uh, from your skill using this mastery. Um, and then all we're going to do is we're going to respect these points once we've joined up at the bottom. And then you're going to go get some life, get some prod speed, and then generally follow this tree. This is the tree I went for. There'll be another pob in the video, which is the pob for my character at the moment, um, which is level 76. But if you follow this, you will absolutely zoom through the campaign. So we'll move on to gear. I'm not going to go 
very much into detailing this at all because I've literally just thrown on stuff that I had on other characters because uh, I'm off on holiday on Monday getting like my bathroom refitted so it's going to be super noisy and, and distracting anyway. So I'm probably not going to play much more and my character, um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is level 76. So all I've done is thrown some gear on it, bought a few gems so that I can get going and at least have some fun playing Tornado Shot. Um, so I'll do a map showcase um, at the end of the video. There's a POB which will go through just before that, which is really what my goal POB is for something that can do T16 maps really comfortable. Uh, melt map bosses, just be quick, fun, and that's it. It's not going to boss at all. I just wanted to get Tornado Shot to work on a fairly okay budget. Uh, now the gear I've got is probably quite expensive. Well, I say expensive, it's probably like maybe five or six divines for the gear. Um, because it's stuff that I had on my lightning strike character or on my spectral shield throw character that I made. I'm keeping the lightning strike character intact, so these items will go back to them eventually. I think it's only the chest that I took um, from my lightning strike character. The rest of the gear I've taken from the spectral shield throw character that was no more than kind of six to eight divines invested in it anyway. Um, so it's definitely not going to be much any more than that. But I'm probably going to review all of this gear. But essentially, I'm not going to omniscience. And I'll go through the tree and how I plan to make up that damage um, in a bit for like the gold pop. Uh, the gear I've put together, I've bought an enchanted helmet. I think this was 100C. I've then rolled attack damage and reduced mana cost as the implicits. And then for now, I've just rolled with chaos resistance um, essences so I can get um, some chaos resistance into the build. The amulet uh, I purchased, I think it was maybe one exalt, uh, one divine even. It's just attributes, T1 flat damage, crit multi, life, and then again more chaos resistance. And then I've anointed crystal skin to get myself almond immune. Uh, the chest is from my lightning strike character. This will go back to him eventually. But this is kind of the sort of chest that I want. I want big life, resistances, determination, aura effect, non-curse effective skills. And I have to craft Ellie ailments on here to make it nice and easy to cap uh, our ailments. The rings both came across from my spectral shield throw character. These were over a divine for the pair. I don't know what they'll be like now because this was a few days ago that I bought it. So it might be cheaper. Um, the first ring, I wanted an amethyst ring to get some more cow's resistance. Then I wanted as much resistances in life as I could with an open prefix to get the channeling skills cost. The other ring I purchased a fractured base. It wasn't very much. Uh, I think it was like 20 chaos. And then I rolled global crit multi uh, essences until again I rolled some nice resistances and either life or space to craft life. Uh, the belt was 100C. Again, it's one that came over from another character. I basically wanted T1 Ellie damage, big resistances, big life on a heavy belt to give me strength. Increased Ellie damage attacks is actually quite big because obviously all of our damage is elemental and this suits the build really well. The gloves are not really anything for the build at all. Again, across from the uh, Spectral Shield Throw character, I pulled them across because they had the increased attack speed and the attack speed implicit. Exposure doesn't do much because you don't do a huge amount of cold damage and there's just mediocre life and a mediocre cold resistance roll uh, on the item. And the boots again came across from my spectral shield throw character. I wanted to get a lot of my ailment avoidance in here. So I bought a fractured movement speed uh, evasion base. I think it was like 15, 20 cows. It wasn't a lot. And then I've rolled loathing essences, which give you ailment avoidance until I basically hit anything that I can craft life on. I've got fire resistance. That does the job. And then I've had to roll some implicits to get ailment avoidance. Wasn't really fussed about a second implicit, but I hit movement speed uh, really early. And then the other two items to go through are obviously not from my Spectral Shield Throw character, which is the bow and the quiver. Uh, the quiver I actually picked up off the ground and ID'd, but essentially you're just looking for a quiver with plus one arrow, some damage, resistances, any damage with attacks, life, anything like that. But bows for an additional arrow and projectile speed are really nice. Unfortunately, I didn't have projectile speed on this. So this is probably an item I'll look to replace, but for now it does a job, but I don't think it's a particularly good quiver. And then the bow, I've picked up a lot of fractured bow bases from Arch Nemesis. Spine bow is what I want to go for because it's got decent base attack speed of 1.45 and it's got good crit chance of 6.5. So I picked up a base which I think is T1 fractured crit. Yeah, it is max roll T1 fractured crit. I have no idea what these would cost. I can't imagine it would be very much. And then I've rolled this with deafening essences of wrath until I've hit something decent. 
The other Ellie rolls are not amazing. It's T3 cold and T6 fire. What I liked about it was the T1 projectile speed is very, very nice. Tornado shot needs projectile speed because it essentially means your, your, your projectiles obviously go quicker, but the more speed you get, the further they go across the screen. The more speed you get, the more clear you get. Uh, and then I've just crafted attack speed with an exalt. This bow is nice. It's nowhere near like what you'd aim for. You'd probably want something with plus arrows. But I'm trying to keep this build fairly budget. So this absolutely fits the bill. I won't need to replace this. This is going to be viable for doing like my T16 farming strategies. Um, and at the moment, it's working really well. So we'll go through the six link. The gems, for the most part, I've took some across from other characters. The rest are just like as they were. So like level 16, 17. So we've got a level 17 GMP. Crit damage came across from a Spectral Shield Throw. Obviously Tornado Shot. Inspiration. Trinity. And then Ellie Damage with Attacks. That's the kind of bog standard six link I always use um, for this sort of build. At the moment, I've just got a five link Ballista. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it nice, it's, it's a nice little bit of supplemental damage. That's Ellie Damage with Attacks. Ballista Totem. Focus Ballista. GMP. And then Tornado Shot. I've only just got these gems, which is why the gems are a low level. I'm also running for bosses. Is power charge on crit, crit strikes, and then uh, tornado. Put the tornado down, you get your power charges on bosses. I'll be able to drop it once I get to like level 90 and I've got all the nodes I need, but for now it's a really nice boost um, for bosses. Uh, just blood rage, precision, grace, determination as the auras. And then I've got my mark on hit with inspiration, uh, sniper's mark, and then haste, which I've now turned into the vile skill. Just again, nice little piece of increased damage uh, for bosses. So I'll just pull up the POB that I want to, to aim for. The POB for the character as it is, is in the description. Um, but obviously, I'm looking to level this super quick. Um, so I'm looking to get a fair few levels per hour to get to level 91, 92, so I can get this tree equipped. Because I don't want to use Omniscience, I need to get as much damage as I can in the build. So life is not huge in terms of percent life from the tree. It's 129, which for a bow build is not terrible. Um, and then we're going up and putting a Lionized Fall in here. So I'm going to get tons more attack speed and then tons more crit chance and crit multi. You can also take this node, which is life and mana leech, which means I can drop these two nodes here. So that basically saves me a point, which I can then spec and get a little bit more life. This is the tree that I want to aim for. We've got our frenzy on bosses and our Cullin strike for marks. We'll also go and do Uber Lab before level 92 and get focal point to finish off the build. And this is kind of what it will look like on bosses in terms of DPS. 500k. But you need to bear in mind this is per secondary projectile that hits an enemy essentially and each arrow i fire and i fire eight arrows each arrow fires off loads of secondary projectiles and secondary projectiles from each arrow can hit the same target so normally you're looking between three and four projectiles because we're standing right on top of the boss it'll probably even be more than that maybe five so you would times this by four or five to get your single target dps so it's going to be about two and a half million and then we'll have a ballista which won't do a lot uh, so if we have a look at the ballista setup, oh, I've still got my lightning arrow ballista setup. Um, but even if it was a lightning arrow one with three ballistas, that's 600k. So I'll easily be doing between two to three million damage on bosses when I got my buffs up. And the clear should be good. Mapping should be good. I'm hoping the build's going to feel really good. And this is all just based on the gear I've already got. There is nothing extra in here um, that I'm going to need to invest in. This is just saying with the gear I've got, which some of it's suboptimal, this is the sort of damage that I'll be doing, and this is kind of what I'm looking at. The only thing I'll try and do is obviously get spell suppression up 20% more, but that's kind of more of an end game thing. I'm kind of happy with where the build is um, defense wise. And then I'm also going to add in um, a molten shell. So this will probably be on move only, and then maybe get an increased duration linked up to it. Just have to have a look at what sockets I've got available. I'd like to get the movement speed up a little bit, so getting something that gives me onslaught on kill would be really nice because we're quite stretched for points because we're going up and getting these bow nodes here. I could drop these, but it's a lot of life and stats to give up. So I've sacrificed the onslaught and kill nodes for now. We could even maybe drop these projectile nodes to go up uh, and get the onslaught nodes. And then we say, yeah, we've got onslaught when we're mapping. And obviously that makes up for the DPS and makes the character feel quicker. I've not decided um, what I want to do with that yet. 
that's kind of it for the video. I really just wanted this to be uh, a guide to show how I leveled the character, really. Once I get back from holiday, um, like a week and a half time, I'm then going to push this build some more, get it up to level 90 odd, get it to that POB that, I'm, that uh, is in the description that I'm looking for as my, like, not end game pob, but my cheap farming pob that's enough to then go and farm some currency with the build. Then I'll bring out a second video, really going through um, the gear. At the moment, as I say, it's just throwing gear that I have in my stash onto the character, and nothing's really been targeted specifically um, at the build other than the quiver and the bow. Um, but what I'll do is just run through and do a quick map showcase. So we're level 76. Um, the gems aren't level, but we've got some pretty decent gear. So I think we could easily do something like a tier 12. I just want to find a map that's not horrible. Um, so we'll go and do a frozen cabins. So we've got less curse effect, which is going to affect sniper's mark. Fizz damage reduction doesn't matter. Vulnerability, we shouldn't really get hit very often, so it should be okay. Um, and Solaris Fanatics is, is okay as long as there's not multi-prog on the map. Um, so yeah, we'll just run through. Do a quick map showcase. So we'll stick Blood Rage on. So it's I like like I say, I like this build because Tornado Shot is a very nice skill to play if you really can't be bothered to aim and you just want to run through a map and click your attack button. Um, because it is gonna take out most of what's on your screen. Um, so we will do the essence. At the moment, it takes a little while to get down, but it's, you know, good enough. And then I did try and drop the Quicksilver Flask or Onslaught Flask, but it just felt too slow moving. Um, so at the moment, yeah, we don't have Onslaught on kill. It'd be nice to get into the build, so it'll make it a lot quicker. Um, and I just want to see if I can get this going on a budget because there's so many people saying, oh, you know, Tornado Shot takes, you know, mirrors to invest and you have to run this and you have to run that. Um, but last week, I got a fairly decent version going for a reasonable amount, but we had Recombinators. So crafting a bow was super easy. Now, obviously, this is only sort of a tier 12 map, um, but it's absolutely destroying it. So it's not something I'm too worried about needing many more upgrades to get it T16 viable. Uh, just some 2020 gems, stuff like that would be nice. Um, essences are still a bit of an issue, to be fair. I'm not going to bother that one because it's wailing. Essences still seemed a little bit overtuned for me. Uh, am I going to die there? No. Nope. So at the moment, this character is hardcore viable, so I want to stay alive if I can. Um. Oh, the bots has gone and I've got nothing from it. Yeah, no deaths on the character at the moment, but then we have been using like very decent leveling gear and at the moment we're probably slightly over geared for this sort of content um but i'd like to stay deathless as long as possible would be nice and then because we've got grace and determination it's pretty okay for survivability at the moment degens is probably the only thing um i've got to look out for um, so that's it for this video. It's quite a long one. I just want on all my videos to give enough detail that if people wanted to try this out, they can. Rather than just saying, here's a build I leveled at 76. This is the gear. Go and give it a go. Wanted to give you guys a good explanation of how I got to this stage. And yeah, it did not cost a lot of money. The leveling uniques are all cheap. They're all like one to two chaos. If you really wanted to go overboard, you could get the 50% movement speed boots. I think they're seven league steps. And, that, and yeah, you'll get through even quicker, but I didn't want to go spending um, that sort of money on an item. Um, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, there'll be a bit of a break on content for a week and a half, and hopefully the next video that comes out is a Tornado Shot character that on like a 10 divine budget is absolutely destroying um, T16 maps. So we'll wait and see. Um, but thanks for watching and see you in the next one.